In a world where the boundaries between reality and the uncanny blur, where the unexplainable often takes centre stage, we find ourselves at the nexus of truth and imagination. Can you discern the fine line that separates the verifiable from the surreal? To decode the riddles that lie before us, one must unravel the tapestry of their own experiences and embrace the inexplicable that challenges our understanding. Welcome to a journey that transcends the ordinary, where the extraordinary beckons you to venture forth in Beyond the Files. Hosted by Curator M. Well, hello, mortal souls. I'm your curator, M. And together, we'll explore the uncharted realms of the unknown files. In our quest to grasp the elusive truth, we'll learn that sometimes we must view it from different angles. Before us lies the very core of perception. At first glance, you might see a musician, deeply immersed in the arts of playing an instrument. But I urge you to pause for a moment and let your gaze wander. Is it truly a mind in perfect harmony with his instrument? Or does your perception reveal the image of a woman? This is a dance between what's apparent and what's hidden, a subtle twist of our visual senses. Does the music emanate solely from his saxophone, or do the lines themselves transform into a graceful contours of a face? The choice, my friends, is yours to make. Before we delve into these tales, Etch this wisdom into your hearts. Truth often lies beyond the surface. In a world where perspectives shift like fleeting shadows, the answers may gracefully evolve with each new perspective. Ever ventured into the great outdoors with nothing but a backpack in your curiosity? They say that traveling broadens the mind offering us the chance to embrace new experiences and cultures. Meet Emma and Chloe, two college friends seeking a summer adventure in the land of the rising sun. They yearn for a break from the ordinary, an opportunity to immerse themselves in a foreign culture and create lasting memories. Little did they know, the journey would lead them to a very heart of the unknown and what they're about to encounter will lead them to a never-ending hiking nightmare. In the heart of Japan's serene countryside, two college friends, Emma and Chloe, embarked on a journey that would shatter their perceptions of reality and plunge them into the depths of a chilling nightmare. Their decision to volunteer as English teachers in a quaint Japanese town was fueled by their thirst for adventure and their desire to immerse themselves in a foreign culture during their summer break. Eager to maximize their experience, Emma and Chloe arrived a day earlier than planned, ready to revel in the beauty of the landscapes that surrounded them. The quaint hotel they checked into stood in the shadow of a dense forest, its towering trees casting an eerie silhouette against the fading light of day. It was there they encountered the owner of the hotel who had witnessed the forest's descent into darkness. He revealed that the school was built on a parcel of land that the townspeople had long avoided, a place where tormented souls had met their tragic end, their despair manifesting in chilling apparitions that haunted the woods. The locals' watchful gazes as they strolled through the town were unsettling, their expressions a curious blend of apprehension and something darker. The school they were assigned to stood near the edge of the forest, its windows gazing out into the unknown. As they approached, a sense of foreboding settled over them. The usually bustling hallways were barren and lifeless, their echoing footsteps the only sound to break the silence. 
confused, they tried to make sense of the situation, only to find that the school was inexplicably closed without a soul in sight. Emma tried calling the head of the volunteer project in Japan, but no service. Undeterred by the strange occurrences, they decide to brush it off and wait until tomorrow on the day they're supposed to come. With time to kill, Emma and Chloe decided to venture into the forest. Their curiosity peaked. The canopy of trees above cast dappled shadows on the path ahead as they walked deeper into the heart of the woods. The air grew thick with tension and an unsettling feeling gnawed at their nerves. Emma and Chloe ventured further into the forest as dusk painted the sky in shades of crimson and gold. Whispers seemed to drift on the wind, carrying with them the weight of sorrow and longing. The forest's beauty was marred by an invisible barrier of fear that cocooned them in its grip. The further they walked, the denser the woods became, the path twisting and turning in ways that defied logic. A cacophony of unsettling sounds accompanied their journey. Branches creaking under the weight of invisible burdens, the murmur of indistinct voices that seemed to emanate from the shadows. As they pushed forward, they stumbled upon a desolate clearing. An ancient tree, its bark twisted and gnarled, stood as a silent sentinel. Faded ribbons and weathered tokens were tied to its branches, a somber memorial to lives lost in despair. It was there in the heart of that clearing that the truth struck them like a bolt of lightning. The forest was not just haunted, but cursed by the souls of those who had met their end within its depths. As the moon climbed higher in the night sky, the forest seemed to come alive with the echoes of sorrowful wails. Apparitions materialized in the shadows, their eyes hollow and mournful. Emma and Chloe's fear intensified as they found themselves trapped in a world that straddled the realms of the living and the dead. The spirits closed in, their spectral fingers reaching out, their anguished cries reverberating through the night. Emma and Chloe clung to each other, their desperation and terror intertwining. They ran, their hearts pounding in a desperate rhythm as they sought to escape the relentless grip of the forest's malevolent inhabitants. As dawn broke, Emma and Chloe emerged from the forest, their bodies weary and their souls forever scarred by the horrors they had witnessed. The hotel loomed before them, the sanctuary of safety that was now tainted by the memory of their nightmarish ordeal. As they entered the hotel, a change of atmosphere was felt among Emma and Chloe. As Emma rang the bell to get the owner's attention, Chloe turns her head towards the TV. A Japanese news anchor was speaking in Japanese, even though the two girls did not understand or learn the language, there were English subtitles for them to read. As the screen transitions to two pictures, Emma and Chloe's reactions were horrified and disbelief. It was a picture of Emma and Chloe. The Japanese news anchor continued to say that the two American tourists had been missing for two weeks near the Aoki Gahara Forest. Japanese police, along with the assistance from the US Embassy in Japan, sent out a search team, but they returned with nothing, only finding their luggage and belongings still in their hotel room. Emma and Chloe's hearts were racing with anxiety as they exchanged worried and confused glances at each other. As the new segment continued, it shifted to the lead volunteer project manager, who mentioned her attempts to reach them upon their arrival had gone unanswered. Security cameras captured their departure from the hotel, heading toward the nearby school, and that marked the last known sighting of Emma and Chloe. The hotel's owner emerged from around the corner, approaching the front. Emma and Chloe breathed a sigh of relief at the sight of him. When they tried to get his attention, however, he stared at them as though looking straight through them. 
Confused, he began to look around and said hello in Japanese. Emma and Chloe stood there, their faces devoid of emotion as if their souls had abandoned them. They turned their heads towards the forest, and what they saw sent shivers down their spines, their own selves staring back at them from the forest, wearing unimaginably eerie smiles. Behind them were the lost souls of the forest, all wearing the same creepy smiles, all staring back at them. So what happened here? Did the two tourists Emma and Chloe saw in the forest were simply just random hikers that looked like them? Could they be long lost twins that happened to somehow be best friends as well? How can you explain the two pictures of Emma and Chloe on the news and the two week gap, even though it felt like hours? Is this case story real? Or is this just another scary story to tell around the campfire, deep in the forest? Here's a sneak peek in the next episode of Beyond the Files. A mime with a troubled past holds a sinister ability, bringing fear to a small town in Beyond the Files. Ever tried dating an apps? The modern tech marvels matching you with potential partners based on your personality. Just read the bios and if you're interested, swipe away. Meet Ethan for example, a regular college student with no time for love. But when he discovers a special someone on a dating app, it leads to a shocking revelation that alters his world forever. In the small town of Ravenswood, nestled along the coastline, there lived a college teen named Ethan. After hearing about the popular dating app, he decided to try his luck and create an account. Late one evening, Ethan swiped right on a woman named Rebecca, drawn to her enchanting smile and sparkling eyes. To his surprise, Rebecca matched with him instantly. They began messaging each other and quickly discovered a shared love for the ocean. Before long, they had agreed on a date and to meet at the pier. Ethan eagerly drove to the pier, his heart pounding with anticipation. As he approached, he spotted Rebecca standing near the edge, her figure illuminated by the setting sun. Hello. Their first date was a whirlwind of laughter, deep conversations, and stolen glances. They walked along the pier, the crashing waves provided a serene soundtrack to their blossoming first date. The evening flew by as they shared stories, dreams, and aspirations. Ethan became a gentleman and drove Rebecca back to her house as she was giving him directions while driving. Before parting ways, Rebecca asked if they want to take a selfie together. Ethan took out a cell phone and took a selfie of them both together. But as the light on the cell phone was about to flash, Rebecca snuck in a quick kiss on Ethan's cheek, right as he pressed the button. It took a very cute picture of them both with Rebecca kissing Ethan's cheek. As they both looked at it together, smiling, Ethan's heart was pounding as they slowly turned their heads towards each other and looked deeply in each other's eyes, slowly leaning in together and shared a romantic, long kiss, sealing their newfound connection. Rebecca promised a second date, and Ethan's heart soared with joy. Over the next week, they kept in touch, talking for hours on end. However, when the appointed day arrived, Rebecca was nowhere to be found at the pier. Ethan's confusion soon turned into concern, and he decided to visit her house. Nervously, Ethan rang the doorbell. His heart racing with anticipation, he hears footsteps walking towards the door. The doorknob started to turn. As Ethan was about to see the woman of his dreams, an older couple opened the door and they had a haunting sadness in their eyes. Ethan was sure he had the right house when he dropped her off that one night, but he assumed they were her parents. 
Ethan introduced himself and explained that he had been on a date with their daughter a week ago. The older couple exchanged a sorrowful glance before inviting him inside. Ethan looked at the pictures on their wall and showed Rebecca next to her parents. They asked him to sit and tell him the frightening news. Ethan was worried something happened to Rebecca as thoughts were racing through his head. Thoughts of her in the hospital or if she was seriously injured but Ethan was not ready to hear what the older couple had to say. They explained that their daughter had passed away 10 years ago. She had been a vibrant young woman with dreams of love and happiness. Rebecca had endured numerous failed dates and all she wanted was to have one happy date. 10 years ago, on the same night Ethan had promised to meet her at the pier, Rebecca had waited eagerly. But her date never showed up. As she stood there, lost in disappointment and heartache, a drunk driver careened towards her. The car crashed into her, sending both Rebecca and the vehicle plunging into the dark depths of the ocean. Ethan couldn't believe what he was hearing. He had spent an entire evening with Rebecca, sharing laughter, dreams, and a tender kiss. The realization struck him like a bolt of lightning. The whole time he had been on a date with a ghostly apparition, a lingering spirit desperately seeking a taste of happiness. Overwhelmed by a mix of emotions, Ethan left Rebecca's childhood home, his mind spinning with disbelief. He returned to the dating app hoping to find evidence of their connection. To his astonishment, her profile no longer existed. He went through his contacts and found Rebecca's number. And as he called the number, it was no longer in service, as if she had been a figment of his imagination. A ghostly presence that had slipped through the veil between worlds. The only evidence he has is the one picture Ethan took of them together as Rebecca snuck a kiss on his cheek. Rebecca's tragic death had been an accident, but her desire for a happy first date lingered in her spirit. Ethan couldn't help but feel a profound sense of gratitude for the fleeting moments he had shared with her, even if they were in the realm of the supernatural. He cherished the memories they had created as well as cherishing the selfie picture of them together, carrying them as a reminder of the power of love and the fragility of life. From that day forward, Ethan carried Rebecca's memory with him, forever grateful for the brief but meaningful connection they had shared. He understood that love could transcend the boundaries of life and death, leaving an indelible mark on the souls that were lucky enough to experience it. As for Rebecca, her spirit finally found solace knowing that she had experienced the happiness she yearned for, even if it was only for a little moment. And though her presence on the dating app had vanished, the memory of their date would forever remain etched in Ethan's heart. A reminder of extraordinary love that could bloom even in the presence of the paranormal. With Rebecca now looking over Ethan from beyond. Could Ethan really be dating a ghostly apparition this whole time? How can you explain the picture they took together after knowing Rebecca died. Was it someone that looked just like her? Maybe a younger sibling? If so, then how were they able to communicate over the phone for a week? Was Rebecca reaching out from beyond? Or am I just trying to catfish here? Stay tuned to find out which unknown case files is real or fake on Beyond the Files. Uh, now, are you ready to tell which is real and which is a fake case story? Let's go back to our first case file where two college students took up a volunteer job as English teachers in Japan. Emma and Chloe's reactions were horrified and disbelief. It was a picture of Emma and Chloe. 
The Japanese news anchor continued to say that the two American tourists had been missing for two weeks near the Aoki Gahara Forest. Japanese police, along with the assistance from the US Embassy in Japan, sent out a search team, but they returned with nothing, only finding their luggage and belongings still in their hotel room. Could this story be simply make believe? You're wrong. This story is inspired by true events. Now, what about the two lovebirds, Ethan and Rebecca? Real or fake? Rebecca had endured numerous failed dates, and all she wanted was to have one happy date. Ten years ago, on the same night Ethan had promised to meet her at the pier, Rebecca had waited eagerly. But her date never showed up. As she stood there, lost in disappointment and heartache, a drunk driver careened towards her. The car crashed into her, sending both Rebecca and the vehicle plunging into the dark depths of the ocean. Do you think this love story is simply made up? You're right. It never happened. So, how did you do? I demonstrated that truth and falsehood live side by side. Were you able to separate the two case files from what was true and what was fake? Or did you find my conclusions simply beyond the files. And remember to change your perspective if you want to see the truth. I'm your curator, M. Join us next time on Beyond the Files. If you want more case files and episodes, don't forget to subscribe and share.